is gone. Well, this morning, um, we put out a post and on the post, you would have seen me talking or me mentioning that we are going to start a new series of messages and we're going to kick that off this morning. We are going to start a new series of messages titled The Voice. The Voice. And in this next few weeks, I'm going to unpack truths and revelations. I'm going to extract from the Word of God understanding and enlightenment around the topic of hearing God's voice, understanding God's voice, being God's voice. We are going to talk about the voice of God, the voice of God. Can you for a moment very quickly, just to activate this this morning, on this first day of our seven days of activation, we have kicked it off today and um, we are ready for this. Seven days of activation. Can you just type out hearing the voice of God? Or just type out the voice, the voice, the voice, the voice. We are going to talk about the voice of God, the voice of God. When we talk about the voice of God, it's very important to understand that this is critical and vital for the life of the believer. In the anatomy of men, in the biological makeup of men, we will find many different systems and organs that form part of a human body. Each and every person that is walking around today that you know has certain or has specific or has systems and organs operating in their body. Parts that form part of their body. This is the natural biological part of men. It's the anatomy of the human body. Every single person has eyes and the purpose of the eyes is to see every single person has a nose and the purpose of that nose is to smell each and every person has a mouth and the purpose of that mouth is to speak some of you use that part of your body too much but we will get you will just pretend like that doesn't happen to you or that isn't really something that's real in your life. But in the anatomy of the natural man, all of these parts are very important. We can go further. We can say men have hands, arms, legs and feet that gives us mobility and gives us the ability to go from place to place. But just as the natural man, just as we have the anatomy of the natural man and there's a physical, biological makeup that consists of various organs and systems, so too, every single believer he has a spiritual anatomy. And part of that makeup, we have, uh, we have organs, we have uh, unseen spiritual organs that assist us uh, in being these spiritual beings that manifest the, the unseen world into the natural world or translates the natural world into the into the, the spiritual world into the natural world or even manifests what's in the spiritual world into the natural world just as we have a natural anatomy and a natural makeup so we have a spiritual anatomy and a spiritual makeup just as a man has physical eyes so a man can have spiritual eyes to see Paul prays a very important prayer and he prays that the eyes of the understanding of the church might be enlightened what was he talking about he wasn't talking about the physical eye he was talking about your spiritual eyes your ability to see the things of God the things of the spirit we all have we all have we all have a mouth to declare amen how can 
they hear unless someone is sent. How will someone be saved unless someone preaches? We need a mouth to declare the word of the Lord. Our nose, which smells in the physical, like some of you can smell that chicken in your mommy's or, or that chicken in your wife's kitchen right now. You can smell it because she was cooking early this morning again before online church, unlike some of you. She was awake. She was preparing. She was getting ready. And now you can smell that chicken while you're watching online service. You can smell it. So too in the spiritual world, we also have a smell and that smell speaks of discernment our ability to pick up things so why am i saying all of this because just as a man has all of these senses so too in the spiritual and in the spiritual man men also have the ability to tap into these different realms so today i want to talk about this aspect of the spiritual anatomy of the man called the ear. Each and every one of us need not only a natural ear, but we also need a spiritual ear. We need a ear to ear. Now the Bible says, let each man to him who has an ear to ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. We have ears for a purpose. We have spiritual ears for a purpose. And that purpose is to hear the voice of God. It's to hear what God is saying. And at this beginning of this, of this, the voice message series I want everyone to know that we have spiritual ears to hear what God is saying we have spiritual ears to hear what God is saying and it's very important for us to tap into that tap into the voice of God now I want to take you to 1 Samuel chapter 3. 1 Samuel chapter 3. 1 Samuel chapter 3. The Bible says, the boy Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 1. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had gone out and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord said, then the Lord called Samuel and Samuel answered, here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Then the Lord called Samuel, and Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again the Lord said, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son Eli. My son Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not know the Lord the word of the Lord had not been revealed to him and a third time the Lord called Samuel and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said yeah I am you called me then Eli realized that it was the Lord calling the boy so Eli told Samuel go and lie down and if he calls you say speak Lord for your servant is listening so Samuel went and lay down in his place the Lord came and stood there calling as at as at the other times and Samuel calling as at the other time saying Samuel Samuel then the Lord said speak for your servant is listening and the Lord said to Samuel and he delivered a very powerful prophetic word about the judgment of Eli 
and the judgment of Eli upon his sons and um, God spoke to 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 Eli concerning the future of the nation this is a very powerful story about a young boy by the name of Samuel who hears the voice of God the Bible says in 1st Samuel chapter 3 verse 1 it says the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli it says in those days the word of the Lord was rare and there were not many visions the Bible says in that time in that period the word of the Lord was rare and the people could not see visions could not hear God the very first point I want to make to you this morning is this it's possible to not hear the voice of God it's possible to be in a place in your life in a season in your life in a moment and period in your life where you cannot hear the voice of God where the voice of God is not clear the voice of God is not accurate where the voice of God is not even being heard at all it's very important for us to understand and know that there are times and there are moments when the voice of God cannot be heard and the voice of God not being heard or uh, the, the voice of God not being heard and why the voice of God cannot be heard is it, it's there's many reasons why the voice of God cannot be heard maybe let me give you a couple of reasons number one why people cannot hear the voice of God number one people cannot hear the voice of God simply because God is not speaking God is not speaking do you know that we have a speaking God but yet we have a speaking God that does not speak all the time sometimes God is just not speaking and many times God is not speaking because God has nothing new to say to you many times God does not speak to individuals because God has nothing new to say to them and he's expecting them to run with what he has previously said if you are wondering why God is not speaking to you concerning the major issues and major areas in your life maybe it's because God is expecting of you to do what he has already told you to do now many of us can we, we hear we read the word of God we can receive from God we can even preach we can teach we can help people we can share the word of God but many times we are all trying to maneuver and, and many people are sometimes in this struggle they're trying to get into this rhythm of hearing God and sometimes God doesn't speak to us because he has nothing new to say to us so God is not speaking because he has nothing new to say and you know many people they make this mistake when they don't hear God speaking they run around looking for prophetic words to get a word from the Lord concerning seasons and sometimes people enter into area they enter into into area they step out of the will of God and they make major um, life decisions because they ran off the prophets they ran off the prophecy and went to someone to tell them something that they know God was telling them not to do or God was you know sometimes we when we're not hearing the voice of God we try to uh, uh, we're not hearing the when we're trying to hear um, when we're not hearing the voice of God many times people are trying to push their own agenda and they they're trying to work up their own lives they're trying to um, 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 push themselves into a place and they know God is saying don't do this and they heard God saying nothing about um, about a desire they had in their heart or a certain ambition they have inside of them they heard God say nothing about it but they're pushing that agenda and so what they do is they go to someone 
and they wait for someone to can I say confirm what is in them because everyone is looking for a confirmation God is saying nothing about that which you want God is saying nothing about that relationship God is saying nothing about uh, about that person God is saying nothing about and you're looking for confirmation sometimes if God is saying nothing it's because he doesn't want to say anything there's nothing for him to say anything concerning that relationship concerning your marriage concerning your job concerning your role in church concerning con- con- concerning your future concerning a move you need to make he's saying nothing because he's nothing new to say so many times we not hear, when we cannot hear God speaking we don't see visions we get no serious clear interpretations of what God is saying it's simple God has nothing new to say about it so don't push an agenda and try to twist um, what try to twist and manipulate a word from the Lord and try to apply something into your life that God is not even saying and we make the mistakes and we're going to error then our lives start going wrong we things start falling apart we start we find ourselves in the wrong place at the wrong time and we come back and we cry look God will speak to you if he wants to shift you move you align you and do something in your life and so wait on the Lord wait for God to speak people number two is people people cannot hear God's voice because they cannot hear God speaking. So the first reason why God doesn't speak is because He's not speaking. There's nothing new to say. But another reason why, why people cannot hear the voice of God is because, or why people, or why the voice of God is rare, let me say, is because they cannot hear the voice of God. They cannot tap into the frequency at which God is speaking. Many times people cannot hear the voice of God because of noise. There's a noisiness and a haziness that will prevent us from hearing what God is saying. Especially in our society today. In this season we are in right now. We are probably in one of the most noisiest seasons. It's noisy, it's hazy. With all the news going around, all the information going around, all the distraction, it's this lots of noise, lots of noise in the media, lots of noise in the news, lots of noise on social media. You cannot go in, onto Facebook and even hear. Do you know there's so many, there's so many posts, there's so many people speaking about the Lord, saying things in the name of God, but yet you cannot interpret and hear God's voice in it. You cannot get a clear cut word from the Lord because because there's just there's too much noise there's, there's, there's too much busyness and sometimes if you want to hear the voice of God you have to eliminate the noise and even in the seven days of, of just seeking the Lord and separating time this is a time for you to eliminate the noise for you to turn down the things that distract you some of you need to you need to turn down the screen time this week and you need to recalibrate this week so that you can hear the voice of god so the bible says that that the voice of god and the word of the lord was rare people could not hear god it's impossible it's, 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 it's possible to be in seasons where, where, where God is not speaking, where God is not moving, or where we cannot hear God speaking, and we cannot hear God saying anything to us. And when we find ourselves in that position, we need to make the adjustments. We need to alter our lives in, in, in a, to a place where we can hear God's voice again. The second point I want to make to you this morning is this. The Bible says that the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. So there's two characters, there's two, there's two people that we are seeing um, in this verse here. We're seeing the boy called Samuel and we're seeing this adult grown leader called Eli. We know Samuel was a boy and we know that Eli was a senior man. 
But what is very interesting in this scripture is that the Bible here is speaking to the boy. It's interesting here that that when God is 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 preparing to release a word concerning the nation, God chooses the boy. He actually bypasses Eli and goes to Samuel the boy. The second point I want you to understand and, and take note of this morning out of this um, out of this story is that. God doesn't speak to age. God speaks to maturity. God doesn't speak to you on the grounds of your age. God speaks to you on the basis of your spiritual maturity. Being a senior doesn't qualify you to hear God's voice. Being in a spiritual mature place in your life and in your heart is what qualifies you to hear God's voice. God will sometimes bypass a senior bypass an elderly man or even bypass someone that's been walking with the Lord for many many years and God will find a Samuel God will find a boy God will find somebody that is available to hear his voice I don't know if there's any people here this morning that's saying I want to hear the voice of God sometimes it's not your age sometimes it's not how long you're in church sometimes it's not how long you've been serving in the temple the question is have you have you developed a maturity or have you do you have a maturity a willingness and availability to hear what God is saying Samuel we know and I'll speak about it right now he was positioned in the right place to hear the voice of God our seniority is not the validation our seniority is not what qualifies us to hear the voice of God it's our spiritual maturity you can be 13 and hear God accurately you can be 15 and hear God accurately and 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 this and this is very important because Paul also tells Timothy and sometimes senior leaders will try to talk people out of and, and come with a form of intimidation to make those who are younger or those who are those who are younger uh, make, make them feel like they, they're not hearing the voice of God and making them feel like they're just being being some they're being silly they're hearing things but let me tell you today that God is speaking clearly and God will speak to any age God will speak to any age. God will locate you based on your maturity. He will locate you based on your position and where you are at. And sometimes this intimidation comes to, to make you feel as if the voice you are hearing is not your, it's not God's voice, but it's your own voice. But Paul reminds them, don't let people look down on you because you're young. Don't let men look down on you because you're young. It was a strong exhortation that Paul was giving to Timothy because sometimes seniority will try to talk you out of your maturity and make you feel and think that you are hearing stuff listen to me child of God if you are in the right place and you've developed the maturity and your senses you can hear God's voice God doesn't speak to age he speaks to maturity now The Bible says that Samuel, the boy, is ministering under Eli. And then the Bible says that Samuel is, one night Samuel, or the Bible says in verse 3, the lamp of God was not gone out and Samuel was lying in the house of the Lord. Where the ark of God was and the Lord called Samuel it's interesting here that, 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 that we see Samuel in a in very, he was in proximity to the presence of God Samuel was in the place of the presence he had a place in fact verse 9 if you go further down it's very powerful verse 9 says so it says this is what Eli told Samuel go and lie down and if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went down and lay down in his place. Samuel had a place. 
and his place had proximity to the presence of God. Samuel was close to the presence of God. The third point I want to make to you this morning is this. You cannot hear the voice of the Lord outside the presence of God. You cannot hear the voice of God outside of the presence of God. When people start hearing the voice of God outside of the presence of God, outside of that closeness with the Lord we need to double check whether we're dealing with opinions or whether we are dealing with God's voice you see if you're going to be in the presence of God you're going to be tuned into the right frequency many people are are, are trying to hear the voice of God but they're not tuned into the right frequency you cannot be on 106.2 FM and expect to hear a, a radio presenter on hot FM or KFM speak to you. You cannot expect to hear that presenter's voice if you are tuned into the wrong frequency. There are frequencies that tunes us into the right stations. And once we're in those stations, we can hear those voices. Just like radio stations have frequencies, so God's voice operates on a certain frequency. It operates at a certain frequency. And it's the presence of God that aligns us, that adjusts us internally to get to adjust us internally and it adjusts our spiritual frequency to hear what God is saying. God speaks at the specific frequency and if we are tuned out of that frequency, we will never be able to hear what God is saying. And when we live outside of God's presence and far from God's presence and we are hearing God's voice all the time, we need to wonder whether we're hearing God's voice or whether we're just hearing our opinions and thoughts. You can trust what you are sensing on the inside of you when your life is sensitized and softened and calibrated and when your life has been altered and aligned into the frequency of God's presence. I was thinking of this and I thought that we can trust our thoughts when we know we are living close to the Lord. You don't have to doubt what you are sensing and feeling when you know you are walking with the Lord. Because there's a union, there's a closeness, there's a oneness with Him. And so, we need to have that oneness, be in the right frequency, so we can hear what God is saying. Sometimes when we are not tuned in with God's frequency, we tend to think that what we are hearing is God's voice. I mean, we're seeing that all over the world right now. Uh, many people don't like to say it and they don't like you to touch on this, but, but, but if, when we look at, uh, in light of all the, the politics, in light of all, everything that's happening, we, we saw this with the Americans. We saw how many people were promoting a certain narrative and were even preaching it, they were praying it, and they were even prophesying it as the word of the Lord. Now, could be, now I'm not here to judge whether prophecy is right or wrong, but what I, what I, want, what I do want to say is this, that many times, many times our preference can influence, many times our preference can influence how we hear the voice of God. And it's very important that we distinguish and we separate that. We separate what we want to see, what we desire to see. We separate that from what God actually is saying and what God is doing. And I'm not here to, de to, to, to declare whether this was true or not true. I'm saying this, that we must be careful to not 
prophesy our preference because when we begin to prophesy our preferences and we find this in church people people want a specific they want a specific they have a specific idea or thought for someone or about someone and they prophesy and they speak over their lives their preference for that person God is not saying anything <laughs> we need to say what God is saying and when we say what God is saying it's because we tuned into his frequency we need to be in the right place in order to be in the right frequency Samuel had a place and that place was close to the ark it was in God's presence how many of you are receiving this morning how many of you are hearing what God is saying to you this morning so we see Samuel he hears he's at the ark and the Bible says he hears the Lord calls him and the Lord says Samuel Samuel and Samuel when he hears the voice of God the Bible says he runs to Eli and he says Eli you called me and this shows us that that Eli recognized this voice or the voice he heard he thought it was Eli's voice it tells us this one thing it, it, it gives us a little bit of insight into into how we hear and interpret God's voice the voice you heard the voice the voice that you're hearing or the voice of God sometimes it sounds like the lost voice you heard it sometimes sounds like the lost voice you were exposed to many times the voice of God can sound like our leader's voice our leader's voice can sound like the voice of God to us Samuel ran to Eli thinking it was Eli who spoke and there's a connection between between God's voice and leadership in our lives sometimes God will use the voice of a leader to be his voice in your life and if you are submitted to credible trusted leadership that walk with the Lord then you can trust your leadership's voice to be God's voice in your life now I'm not talking about some phony who's presenting himself as God's voice that's a different thing but we can trust leadership in our lives and we can trust that the voice is sometimes God's voice but Samuel here goes to Samuel goes to Eli and Eli says to Samuel okay Samuel I did not speak to you go back and this happened one two three four three times the third time Samuel said go back he actually recognized God was speaking to him and then he he shows Samuel how to respond to the voice of God he said if you hear the voice again say yeah I am Lord speak if you want to if you want to develop walking in the voice of God you need to come under the mentorship of of a man or a woman or a teacher God will send you teachings, a teacher, to show you how to hear the voice of God. My prayer this morning is that, that this would in some way activate you. That there's enough articulation here this morning to, to help you to, to hear God's voice, but also to become hungry to hear God's voice. God will many times place us under leadership under a ministry under a teaching under a Eli ministry that will teach us and show us how to your train us there will be the ministry of training and teaching that will explain to us and unpack and extract God's word concerning you his voice so find a ministry to submit to submit in our church submit to the teachings and watch how God will train you into sensitivity and to knowing His voice. So the Bible says that Samuel comes to him and he says, he says, he says, Eli, you spoke to me. And 
Eli confirms, no, I haven't spoken to you. Then on the third time, he confirms, it was God, oh, he gets a confirmation that God was speaking to him. But it's interesting how every time Samuel heard the voice of God and missed it, God called him again. Do you know that it's, if you've missed, if at any point in your life, or if even, even this season right now, if you feel like you're missing God's voice, I want you to be assured, God will speak again. If you feel like you heard God's voice, but and now you're not hearing it again, and maybe I missed it, or maybe you heard God's voice, you, you stepped out and you did something, and now you don't feel like God is telling you this, this new way or this new path, listen to me today. If God spoke to you once, He will speak to you again. If you miss that call, God will call you again. God is not like that friend who calls you. You miss that call. You see the miss call on your phone and that friend never calls you back again. He's just like, ah, this guy doesn't, doesn't want to pick up. God is, God is not moved by you not picking up. If you don't pick up that phone, that phone to hear His voice, guess what? God will call you again. And I want to give this as a message, as a sense of comfort to somebody because someone is watching me this morning and they feel like, I can't hear God because I think He spoke to me before. I missed His voice and He won't speak to me again. Or maybe you feel like, or maybe you feel like God is withholding His voice from you. Listen to me today. If God spoke to you before, He will speak to you again. If you miss that call, He will call you again. So just get ready. Just, just go and wait. It's interesting how when Samuel missed God's voice, Eli sent him back. But the Bible doesn't tell us how long Samuel had to wait for God to call him again. And sometimes when, when you are in the process of trying to receive a word from God and hear God's voice, sometimes uh, it's, it takes waiting on God. It takes waiting on God. Let me say this to someone there, out, out there this morning in, in online church world, that no time waiting on God is wasted time. No time waiting on God is wasted time. God's, when we are waiting on the Lord, we are positioning our hearts to receive from Him. We are positioning ourselves. We are, we are calibrating our hearts to, to, to hear from Him. And sometimes when we stepped out and we did something and we, we, maybe we started a business that didn't work, we, we reached out to we, we started a certain initiative that didn't work out. We maybe took a new path in our, in our, in our, in our walk and in our life it did not work out. And, and now we feel like, mm, I failed. I, I'm in the wrong place. God will speak to you again. He will redirect you and He will reroute you. He will reroute you. And He will give you a new direction. He will show you once again what, what you need to do. So we see Samuel in the story is a picture of someone who was learning to interpret the voice of God, learning to translate what heaven was saying to him. And each and every one of us will, just like Samuel, we need to tune our spiritual ear to hear what the Lord is saying. Because God's word to you is with purpose. God's word to you is 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 important and it's vital this word that samuel was receiving wasn't just a word that would impact his own life but it was a word that would impact his leadership's life it was a word that would impact the nation of israel's existence and reality there are certain things that god will say to you that will be very important and you will need to position yourself to hear his voice because his voice when it comes it will change destinies it will alter marriages it will shift your life it will bring promotion and increase it will bring profit to your life it will break the power and the assignment of the enemy and it will usher in new things into your life is there anyone this morning that's ready to hear the voice of God can you give him a shout of praise in this place 
God is getting ready to speak and God is getting to release his voice come on there where you are this is what I wanted to share with you this morning I believe that God is going to raise up a prophetic Samuel generation that will hear his voice that will be positioned close to his ark to hear what the spirit is saying to know what the spirit is saying to all the Samuels on the online church this morning can you raise your hands in the air and begin to pray in the spirit because I am going to believe and trust God this morning for a major activation in your heart and in your life in the name of Jesus Christ father right now I pray for each and every young person every man every woman and every person tune online I pray that you would activate them this morning activate the spiritual senses activate the ears God let them have ears to hear let them have eyes to see let them have a heart to perceive in the name of Jesus Christ right now God I pray that you will remove the noisiness remove the distractions God and let each and every man and woman and young person this morning have the ear to hear what the Spirit is saying if that is you and you believe that God is speaking to you and God is preparing you and God is God is changing the conditions and the internal space in your life then I want you to give him a shout of praise shout Amen because God is with you and God is about to do an amazing work come on give him a shout of praise hallelujah praise God that's what I believe for your life I believe that God is going to activate his voice in your life that you are going to hear like a Samuel generation you are going to hear him and you'll be able to and you'll be able to process the word of the Lord inside of you and live in God's will well this morning won't you just shout amen if you receive shout amen if you are receiving from the Lord this morning um, before we go any further 